Hi friends, welcome to Biology Exams for A.com. Today's topic is a very short video on four levels of protein structure. If you are new to this channel, please subscribe and support this channel. Let's begin with the definition of protein. Proteins are biopolymers made up of amino acids joined by peptide bond. They are the most abundant biopolymers inside the cell and also with diverse functions. There are four levels of protein structure. Before moving into the detail, let's begin with a quick summary of four levels of protein structure for better understanding. This is a primary protein structure. As you can see, it is simply linear chains of amino acids joined by peptide bond. This primary structure folds and forms the secondary structure. As you can see, this is a secondary structure. The most common secondary structures are alpha helix and beta sheets. Here, with the addition of hydrogen bond, this primary structure has folded by the formation of other bonds like hydrogen bond. The secondary structure further folds and forms the three-dimensional functionally active structure which is called the tertiary structure. This is a biologically active conformation of majority of the proteins. Here many bonds are involved other than peptide bond and hydrogen bond. In some proteins, that protein may be made up of more than one polypeptide chains. Then each chain is called a subunit as in the case of hemoglobin. In this protein you can see there are two subunits. That forms the quaternary structure. This protein is having this three monomer. Therefore, that makes the quaternary structure. In the case of proteins with more than one polypeptide chains. Now let us move into the detail of each of the structure. Primary structure. Primary structure is simply linear sequence of amino acids joined by peptide bond. So it is having an N-terminal and there is a C-terminal. It refers to the sequence order and number of amino acids. This is the first amino acid. As you can see, there is a carboxyl group of first amino acid and amino group of second amino acid that joins by releasing water molecule and the resulting bond is called the peptide bond. This C double bond O NH bond is called the peptide bond. Each protein is having a unique sequence of amino acids or primary structure that is based on the gene sequence. Now moving into secondary structure. Regular ordered repeated folding of primary structure forms the secondary structure. The major bond involved other than peptide bond is the hydrogen bond in secondary structure. The first one is the alpha helix. This is one of the most common secondary structures in proteins. As you can see, this helical structure is called as the alpha helix. So this is a zoomed in version. This alpha helix is formed by the hydrogen bond formation between the amide hydrogen and this carbonyl oxygen. So distant amino acids are joined by hydrogen bond that causes a folding. Suppose this is the first amino acid this, that combines with the fifth amino acid that causes a folding to form a helical structure. So in the case of alpha helix, there is approximately 3.6 amino acid residues per turn. So this is the alpha helix. You can see this is a helical structure. And this is a beta pleated sheet. In the case of beta pleated sheet, the bonding is between adjacent segments which are fully extended. You can see these segments are fully extended and the hydrogen bond is between these adjacent segments of proteins. So here the bonding is the same. The amide hydrogen and carbonyl oxygen forms hydrogen bond. So this forms sheets of proteins. This is often present in the case of fibrous proteins. Here two or more segments which is called as beta strands of a polypeptide chain and so this is the silk fibroin as you can see it is made up of many beta sheets. So these sheets are held together by hydrogen bonds. There can be two possibilities if the polypeptide chain involved are in the same direction if both the chains are in the same direction this is amino terminal and this is carboxy terminal if both the chains involved are in same direction then it is called as parallel if it runs in opposite direction, this first chain is NC, this direction, and this chain is 
to this direction. So if both these adjacent segments are in opposite direction, then it is called as anti-parallel beta sheets. Classical example is silk fibroin which is made up of many beta sheets. So in short, secondary structures are primarily held by hydrogen bonds apart from peptide bond. Now tertiary structure. Tertiary structure of protein refers to the overall three-dimensional biologically active conformation of a protein. It is formed by many bonds. There are hydrogen bonds, then hydrophobic interactions, and there is disulfide bond between distant locations of a polypeptide chain. There is ionic bond, Van der Waals force. All interactions are there that contributes to a biologically active conformation in the case of a protein with active sites and catalytic sites and allosteric sites or regulatory sites. So this overall three-dimensional structure is called the tertiary structure. For majority of proteins, tertiary structure is a biologically active conformation. So it is stabilized by all types of interactions. One of the major interactions is this hydrophobic interactions. Amino acids that are hydrophobic tend to be inside the protein whereas hydrophilic amino acids are often exposed or seen to the outside. So this is the tertiary structure as you can see it is made up of beta sheets alpha helix so this secondary structure further falls by many bonds types of bonds and ultimately forming a three dimensional tertiary structure which is often the biologically active conformation in majority of proteins. And finally quaternary structure. Quaternary structure exists in proteins with two or more identical or different polypeptide chains and each chains are called subunits. Classical example is hemoglobin. As you can see hemoglobin is made up of two alpha chain and two beta chain alpha 1 alpha 2 and beta 1 beta 2. This type of protein with many subunits are having this quaternary structure. So let's take this example to understand better. So this is the tertiary structure. As you can see, this is a quaternary structure. The same protein, this same polypeptide chain is represented thrice in this case, one, two, three. So it is having many monomeric units. So quaternary structure refers to the interaction between these monomeric units. So in a quaternary structure, there are many polypeptide chains and it refers to the number of different subunits or polypeptide chains that makes a functional protein and also the interaction between these subunits or polypeptide chains. And these are the four levels of protein structure. Thank you so much for your support. Please subscribe and share this video. You are with biologyexamsforay.com.